All right, folks, so here we go with, I think, what is in many ways the first proper uh, entry in the author diary. So uh, the book, um, which I is currently going through uh, another round of revisions, I've also got it out to some beta readers now, which is proving to be incredibly helpful. Um, so that's a process I highly recommend. Um, and there's a lot of stuff for me still to do, but as it currently stands, working title is Dreams of Fire. We'll see if I keep that or not. This is a high fantasy, so it is not set on Earth. It is set in a completely original world. It's a story that deals with magical forces, fey creatures, um, steampunk style technology. You have a primary character who is on the run. You have a bunch of other characters that he interacts with. You have the characters who are hunting him. You have unknown agendas. You've got a magic system that I had to work out. The world to build. The backgrounds. The organizations. Everything going on. Where did all of this nonsense come from? The thing is, it's a bit of a cliche not only to ask authors, where do you get your ideas from, but for authors to be really annoyed at the question, where do you get your ideas from? And the thing is, like, it's really hard to nail down, at least, like, it is for me, and of course, pompous for me to say that, considering that I've, I've only got one fictional work published and self-published, because no one else would publish it, which will probably be the case with this, too. I gotta stop harping on that, though. Anyways, come on, dude. Get with it. Uh, so... <laughs> The thing is, um, for me at least, more often than not, nearly everything that I've actually sunk time into um, and like really put work into to build out started with one single thing that I just kept building on. So, you know, when people say, where do you get your ideas? They're probably looking for, you know, where these big sweeping concepts come from. And I'm like, that comes later. For me, it always starts from a kernel. A single nugget that, for whatever reason, sticks on my head and then I start to play with and build around until suddenly I look at what I go and go, oh, dang, I could actually do something with that. So, I get to actually tell the origin story of this book. Um, and I think I've, I've said this before, but we'll get it officially on the record. So, I have been working on this thing for, oh, 17 years? Uh, it was my second year of college. Uh, my first year at a new college, because the college I was at for my first year was not a good fit. Um, not that I finished college <laughs> once I moved to the second one, but that wasn't because the college was, wasn't a good fit. That was because my personal life imploded and I was a moron. Um, but anyways, that's a whole other story. Anyways, I was laying in bed uh, one night and, you know, in my dorm and I couldn't sleep. Now, the first thing I need to stretch is, stress is that is actually atypical for me. Rule of thumb, I lay my head down if I'm comfortable within five minutes, boom, I'm out. And then I sleep through the whole night. I don't wake up in the middle of the night. I don't toss and turn. If I don't fall asleep or if I have trouble staying asleep, there's usually something off. I don't know what it was in this case, but for whatever reason, I was laying in bed and I couldn't sleep. And so I kind of... Out-of-body experience is probably going a step too far, but I kind of basically pictured someone more or less like myself. I didn't think of it as picturing myself, though. I saw my, I thought of it as picturing a character. So, I picture a young man, because I would have been about 19, 20 at the time. So, I picture in my mind a young man, and he is laying in a room, and he can't sleep. And that was the initial kernel, most basic thing in the world. How did that evolve? Well, like I said, I just started building around it. Why can't he sleep? Well, he's in pain. Okay, why is he in pain? Is he injured? No. No, there's something that he's holding back. Like a, an energy, a force? Yeah, something kind of like that. Okay, why can't he let it go? Oh, well, he can't let go of it uh, because there are other people around him who it would injure. So now I'm creating a setting around this where he's asleep and around other people. 
Like, okay, so can he continue to hold this indefinitely? No, this is building to the point where he cannot hold it back anymore and he needs to get out. And so then I actually, from that point, actually have a narrative to build. He needs to get out of this room. He needs to navigate around all these other sleeping people and get out before he gets noticed. Why can't he get noticed? Well, this thing that he's holding back is something that frightens other people and they don't know that this is something that he has to deal with. So I've now added more background just again extrapolating 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 and building on answering the uh, the questions that come up and so okay so he tries to get out does he get out unnoticed no he's been gripping his hand because that's where things are concentrating and building up and he accidentally touched another person in the room and burned them oh so it's a fire energy yes it's a fire energy and so he gets out and he flees do they just let him go no somebody takes some pot shots at him what, would like a gun? No, some sort of other like electro bolt thing. We'll figure that out later. But yeah, something weird like that. Okay, cool. Uh, what does he do? Just like run? No, he runs into the woods. Okay, why is that a good idea? Well, because no one is going to follow him into the woods. Why not? Because the woods are dangerous. Because what lives in the woods doesn't like people. But he's going to run in there anyway? Well, yeah, he's going to roll the dice. Okay, but no one's going to follow him? No, they're not. Okay, what happens once he's in the woods? Fire. Fire happens once he's in the woods. Does he burn the woods down? No. What is in the woods contains it and keeps it from spreading too far. And the release of it causes him to lose consciousness. And thinking this out, laying in bed and sort of building step after step, stack after stack, answering these, asking these questions and thinking of an answer to them, I got up and banged out what effectively was a rough draft of chapter one of the book. And actually, what I've just described to you is still in the book. Uh, it's basically the latter half of chapter one. There's a lead in uh, front half of that chapter, but then the latter half is basically what I've just said. And the, I, I ended up writing a lot of stuff here and there that I ended up pulling together later, and some of it ended up scrapping completely because for one reason or another I either didn't need it or I shifted something and it didn't work anymore but that always stayed there and that's not to say that it had to have uh, eventually I built enough of a story that I could have probably ditched it but it always stayed there it always seemed to fit and again for me when it comes to building something particularly if, when if I'm dealing with a fantasy or sci-fi or anything where I'm making up rules making up creatures, a world, magic, what have you. I, I always sort of format it in my head as a question and answer. I think, okay, so this, and then I think, okay, well, if it's that, then what about this? What about this? Does that mean this? And I basically almost like debate my, I, it's like I'm grilling myself um, and, and try and figure out, well, what are the questions that that idea brings up? Because I think, a lot of writers have a tendency to get very excited by their ideas and they don't stop and think about the questions. I, I like, I'll, I'll share a bit of an anecdote. Um, there, was, uh, there was a guy I knew uh, while I was in college. He was a little bit older. Uh, and I've, I've lost contact with this person, so I won't name them. Um, but he, he was working on, I think he was actually planning out as a series of books, like sci-fi epic, like planet hopping, you know, big quest, save the universe kind of thing. And he, <laughs> he had at, at his central core, I hope he doesn't see this. I don't want him to make him think I'm making fun of him, but I'm just trying to illustrate a point. He had at a central core that the hero had to find the various parts of a sword uh, and assemble them together so that he had something that could defeat, you know, the evil that was rising that had to be dealt with. Um, and, and it had to be this one uh, specific guy because it was his destiny, because it was his family's legacy. Only his bloodline could wield the sword. And when he was telling me that, I said, okay, question. Why is the sword in multiple pieces? Why isn't it kept as one thing? Oh, well, for safety. Okay, but... If his family's the only ones who can wield it, who is it being kept safe from? That seems like it's just complicating things and making it harder for them to ever get to use it. And he didn't have an answer for that. 
and I hope he went back and like worked on it some more and, and I didn't just blow things up, but it, it became very obvious to me in that instant he didn't think about the questions that would get asked. He just got excited about the idea and the story it would allow him to tell that he never went back and went, okay, but if that means that, then why this? Or if this is this, then doesn't that mean that? And figuring out the answers to those things. So that's kind of at the core of how I build out anything. Uh, that's the core of how I built out the play that I wrote. It's the core of how I built out this novel. It's the core of how I built out numerous other things that I've started that may or may not ever get finished. But that's sort of always where I start from. A single thing and then answering questions. I'll make one other comparison to something else. I wrote a short play that actually got into a, a short play festival a few years ago. I can't remember how many now. Um, but that started with just uh, figuring out a way that a character talked and that the way he spoke with people was to refer to himself in the third person, but not third person by name, third person by what his relationship was to the people he was talking to. So whenever he was talking to his his sibling, he referred to himself as little brother. When he was talking, um, you know, if he was talking to a doctor, he would refer to himself as patient. If he, you know, if he was talking to a teacher, he referred to himself as student and things of that nature. And I just started with that. I'm like, oh, okay. But then I thought, okay, what would it be like to actually try and interact with someone like this? What kind of setting would make any kind of sense for someone like this? And again, answering questions that came up based off this little starting point. And that's how I build out. Uh, and I have at this point, as I said, ended up with an actual friggin' book out of that. It's crazy. So that's uh, it for this one, folks. As we get down the line, uh, next one in two weeks, if I can keep my schedule, uh, and we'll start getting into things like uh, how I developed the main characters, what they're like, the ways in which they changed over time, and then uh, you know later on talking villains, world building, magic system, creature creation, um, thing, you know what sort of mythology and whatever I pulled from, and all that sort of stuff. So you have that to look forward to. Hope you found this interesting. Insightful seems a little bit uh, hope over hopeful on my part, but hope you're enjoying it all the same. So thanks for tuning in and, uh, see you in the next one.